I'm going to talk about the 10 do's and don'ts for doing a virtual listing presentation using Zoom or some other video platform for realtors. So let's dive right into it. Hi there, it's Kevin Ward, the founder of Yes Masters Real Estate Success Training, helping you get more yeses and more successes in your business and in your life. I did a video recently on how to do a virtual listing presentation. We'll put the link in the description of this video down below. And in it, I just talked about here's how you do a virtual listing presentation different than a in-person listing presentation. How do you make those adaptations? So in this video, I wanted to take that a little deeper and go into the technical side of how do you actually do a virtual listing presentation in terms of using Zoom as a platform or as a software for doing a conference call or a meeting with somebody else. Now, Zoom's not the only thing that you can use. There are other platforms, other softwares, but it's probably the most common. It is super user-friendly and it's the one that I'm familiar with, so it's the one that I recommend is zoom. I think you go to zoom.us, I think is the website. If not, you can Google Zoom uh, and it'll, it's easy to find. All right, so having said that, let's talk about how to do a virtual listing presentation. I'm gonna talk about the 10 do's and don'ts for doing a virtual listing presentation using Zoom or some other video platform for realtors. So let's dive right into it. Number one. Number one do is do it on your computer with good Wi-Fi or good internet connection. Hard wire is always better and a good webcam. All right, so if you have a good built-in webcam, that's awesome. If you've got a good computer, you can get this as a Logitech. So I use a Logitech webcam and this webcam right here, I'll put the model number down in the description because I don't remember the exact model number, but it's a really good one. You can use a good webcam, a good built-in webcam. If you've got an up-to-date computer, will be as good as, as well if you've got everything else set up correctly. So number one, do it on a computer. Do it with good Wi-Fi connection and a good webcam. Don't be in your car or in a noisy environment or be doing it, trying to do it with your phone or something that you're holding in your hand, okay? So that's do and don't, number one. Number two, do use an external microphone or a headset. Do, don't try to use your built-in microphone on your computer. The reason is, is because it picks up every noise. And when you move paper on your desk, it just makes a ton of noise. If somebody, if it happens outside your door or anywhere, makes a ton of noise. So you want to use a good, you can use either your headset, like your phone headset will work typically very well. Um, I've got the, um, the Yeti Blue Mic, which you can also get this on Amazon. This is sits on your desk and it's good if you do a lot of these or if you do uh, a, like our coaching, for my coaching members, they're on a Zoom coaching call with me every week. So we use uh, I encourage them to have a good microphone. You can also use a good headset with the boom mic and all of that. Uh, but make sure that you do that. Don't use the built-in mic because it picks up all the sound. Do number three. Do have your camera, your webcam at eye level. Do have it at eye level. Don't have it down looking up your nose. All right, so this is one of those things that's kind of weird because when we, if you're doing it, especially if you're using your built-in webcam on your computer, typically when you're sitting at your desk, your computer is gonna be somewhat below you. So if I'm standing at my desk, like I'm right here, this is my desk, it's a stand-up desk, but if I bring my computer here, my, my uh, laptop computer, my webcam, built-in webcam, is about right here, okay? Well, when you're standing up close to the camera and I'm up close to it like this, it is coming up at an angle like this. So it's looking up at me and it's not a good look. Okay. On the other hand, you also don't want to have a camera mounted up super high and it's looking down at you. Ideally is right here, eye level, nose level. You want something that's directly looking directly at you. We don't want an up your nose shot where the, the camera's looking up your nose. All right. Number four. Do have good lighting in front of you. You want good lighting, lighting the front of you, lighting your face, your whole face, not just the top of your head. Don't have a dark, don't, don't be in a dark room. Don't have a bright window behind you, even though it may kind of look pretty in your eyes. When you have bright light behind you, it washes out the camera and it makes you look like a, you're in a, you know, a witness protection program. And 
don't have a bright light straight over your head and that's the only light in the room because you have it, it it's bright on the top of your head um, and then it, sh- it casts shadows. So your eyes look like they're, they're kind of in a shadow and you have a shadow under your chin and it just does not look great. So you can invest in, if you're gonna, again, if you're going to be doing this a lot, if you're facing a window, natural light is awesome. So if you're doing this and, you, and you're on your computer and there's a light, a window you're looking at, that means you get good light in your face. So that's ideal. If you need artificial light, studio lights, uh, this is probably the best thing to get. This is a, a D, called a Diva Ring Light. You can order these on Amazon. This particular one is called the Diva Ring Light Supernova. This is a pretty high quality one. It, it was not cheap. Um, and it comes with a tripod uh, so that you can set it out. This, I have this one mounted and it has a mount that you can buy. But again, those aren't cheap either. You can mount it on your desk. You can get smaller ones. There's different mounting mechanisms and all that kind of stuff. But I recommend that you have good light in your face, whether you actually invest in a studio light that's for it or just have a good uh, natural light from a window or whatever in front of you is great. You don't want to have a big bright window right next to you on one side and darkness on the other because then you look like you know half of your face is lit up and the other half is dark. So you just want to have good light in your face um, so that it looks good. All right. So that is do and don't number four. Do and don't number five. Do practice any screen sharing that you are going to do. So when you're doing screen sharing, that means you share your screen typically. And that is like if you're showing them the, the comparative market analysis, you're showing your, your marketing plan or your uh, selling system or whatever it is that you're showing them. Uh, you can do a screen share. You can also have it as hard copies and hold it up so they can see it. Uh, you can send it to them. But again, when you send it to them, then if you have too many things for them to try to figure out what you're trying to explain to them, then they're looking at it and they're in control of it. So don't depend on them finding the right thing in the packet that you send to them and fi- expect them to look at it and follow along with you. It's much easier if you're in control of the conversation. I can show them what I want to show them. A screen share is a great way to do it. So do do a screen share, but do have it practiced. Okay, make sure you practice how to do the screen share. Make sure that you practice how to make sure you walk through everything so that you're not depending on, you know, if, if, if something happens or it messes up because that can happen. Now, here is a don't, and it is a big don't. If you are going to do a screen share, don't have other browsers or programs open on your computer and don't share something you don't want them to see. I, I know that sounds kind of funny, but it's, I've had, I've been, I do Zoom, I've been on a lot of Zoom calls, I've seen a lot of screen shares, and I've seen screen shares that it was like, whoops, that was not meant for somebody else to see. So you don't want to do anything that is compromising, anything that's confidential, anything that they, they should not be seeing. You want to make sure that all that is closed out and don't share the wrong browser or don't share the wrong tab or don't, uh, don't share the wrong uh, screen. You just want to make sure that you are prepared. So do practice any screen shares you, so you know how to do it and you make sure you show, share the right screen and don't have other stuff open that you can accidentally share something embarrassing or whatever. All right, number six. Do number six. Number six is do have a professional, be in a professional setting. Okay, you want to best, the best is in your office. The best is a professional setting. This is a business presentation, so you want, it needs to be business. Now, if you do it at your home or especially, you know, if we're watching this during the corona crisis and you're at home in lockdown, doing it from your home and your li- is fine. You just want to make sure it looks good. You got the good lighting and all of that. And you want to make sure it's a nice, clean background behind you and you're not having a bunch of clutter and piles of boxes and crap behind you. Again, I do, I do Zoom calls all the time where people are, share, um, people are on video and you would not believe all the stuff that I see and it just blows my mind. I'm like, if I was a, a home seller, I look at your back behind you and I'm going like, this person is so cluttered, they're so disorganized, I don't know if I can trust them. They, they're probably gonna lose my listing. So you wanna make sure you have a professional background. Don't have a cluttered background. Don't do a mugshot. Now a mugshot is this. Don't do a video where you're literally up back up against a wall. It just looks horrible. And if you're doing a Zoom, you don't want to be backed up against a wall. It just doesn't look good. And the last don't is, especially with Zoom, and pay attention here, don't use fake backgrounds. 
Do not, Zoom has all these fancy, cute backgrounds of you can have ocean view behind you or a business downtown setting, all, this, all these very cool fake backgrounds. The problem with them is they look like fake backgrounds. So do not use them. We have people on my coaching calls, they're on, they're on camera and they've got, they, they put up a, these fake backgrounds and it looks so bad. And anytime you move, it's chopping your head up and it's coming through your hair and around your ears and it just looks bad. Don't use a fake background, period, end of story. Number seven, do be in business dress. This is a business presentation. It is better to be overdressed than it is to be underdressed. So don't be casual about your business. If you are casual about your business, your dress, people look at that and they subconsciously assume that you are casual about taking care of them, that you're going to be casual about your business and they want somebody who is, who is a, a go-getter. They want somebody who's dialed in, who's clocked in and who's going to take care of them and take care of business. It is better to overdress than it is to underdress. So do be in business dress and don't look casual. Don't be casual about your business. Number eight, do stand up. When you're doing a presentation on Zoom, it, your energy is really, really important. And when you're standing up, you just have a better energy about you. So if at all possible, you want to stand up. Now to do that, you also got to get your, your computer up. If you're using your webcam, you got to get everything up high enough so that it's at eye level. I'm, I'm just going to let you know right now, I mentioned having the camera at eye level. Your, your computer, it's too low. You may need to set it on a box or set it on something that lifts it up so that you're that way. But when you're standing, I shoot almost all of my videos. All, not, not 100% of them, but probably 90% of my videos, I'm standing. You see me. I'm, I'm standing up right now. Why? You have better energy. Your body's more loose. It can move. You want to be at your desk. I love a stand-up desk. That's what I use as a stand-up desk. And that is the best thing. The key is that you don't want to look like a couch potato lounging. The worst possible thing is for you to take, and I've got a... This is a bar stool, but you don't want to be sitting in your in a executive chair, you know, an office chair, and be sitting back like this. And ah, how's it going? And you look like you're, you know, you've clocked out. You're not doing business, so you don't want to look like you're lounging or being lazy or casual or just kind of like this. They they need to know that the person they're going to hire is going to be on top of it, is a go-getter, is taking action, and is going to make stuff happen. So don't be sitting back all casual like a couch potato because that does not make them trust you at all. Number seven, number nine, number nine, do be prompt and prepped. You want to make sure if you've got a four o'clock virtual listing presentation that you are logged into your Zoom 10 minutes early so that when they come on, you're already there. They need to know that you are there. You, do, you show up prompt and you show up prepped. Don't wing it. Don't ramble and don't be late. Okay, those are the big don'ts with that one. So do be prompt and be pumped and don't be late. Don't ramble and don't wing it. Number 10, be pumped. Be excited. Smile. When you smile and you're excited about the meeting, when you're excited about your presentation, it tells them that you like what you do. It tells them you're excited about helping them. It tells them you're excited about their house. That's what they want. If they believe and know that you're excited about talking to them and excited about helping them, they automatically assume that you're going to do it better than somebody who's not excited because we tend to give more energy and more commitment and more focus on something we're excited about. So you got to come across in the meeting as excited and don't, the ultimate don't, don't look somber, don't look mad, don't look worried. And, and it's funny when you do video, uh, you don't realize sometimes that when you're talking, you get really intense that your eyebrow furrows like this and you look worried or you look upset. Can't do that. You got to be eyes open, eyebrows lifted. I want to be pumped. I want to be prompt and uh, pumped and excited and don't be boring. It is the ultimate worst thing is uh, they want you smiling, but they want you moving. They want you talking with energy and don't bore them. Don't look worried. Don't look sad. Don't sound like you would rather be somewhere else because it will kill you totally. So that's my top 10 do's and don'ts for doing a virtual listing presentation on Zoom. 
what did I miss? If you have other things that you would add to this of how to have a powerful virtual listing presentation or buyer consultation works the same exact way, what would you say we need to add? So add those in the comments below. If I missed anything, if you have any ideas or if you agree with anything, make sure you post comments or any questions you have down in the comments below. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if this has been helpful for you. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel so you get notice of all the other things we got coming up. We got some great training videos coming up for where the hottest opportunities are in the real estate industry right now for, for uh, getting business even during in the, during the crisis. So thank you for joining me today. Play to win and always expect yes.